is asking, uh, boss, why is um, Bitcoin going down in price and the dominance is not going up? This is a really good question, a sophisticated question, actually. And once again, I think I'm going to have to go to the charts to demonstrate this because some people might not know what Bitcoin dominance is. Um, first of all, I will tell you that I'm not... The Bitcoin dominance is actually kind of a BS indicator. It has some small uses, but its foundation is very, very shaky as a legitimate indicator to place a lot of focus on. All right? So I will preface everything I'm about to say with that, just so you know. All right? So let's get to it. Now, um, Bitcoin dominance, let me grab it here. This is the Bitcoin price. I will go to a daily chart here, and then I'm going to go to Bitcoin dominance, which I think is, no, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. There, no, that's the Bitcoin market cap. Let me just open up the words here. Here we go, Bitcoin dominance right there. All right, so. Um, what the Bitcoin dominance is supposed to measure is Bitcoin versus the rest of the entire cryptocurrency indicator, the, the cryptocurrency system, the cr cryptocurrency sector. So when the Bitcoin's dominance is rising, it means that everything else in the cryptocurrency ecosystem everything else is declining more than Bitcoin. So for instance, if, if this is BTC, all right, and Bitcoin is declining, and this is the rest of the cryptocurrency market, everything else, if Bitcoin is declining like this and the, the rest is declining like that, Bitcoin dominance will go up because the relevant strength of Bitcoin versus everything else is stronger, all right? Conversely, conversely, if Bitcoin is going up more than the rest of the industry, Bitcoin's dominance will go up as well, and vice versa. So, for instance, if Bitcoin is accelerating to the downside, faster on average than the rest of the industry, Bitcoin's dominance will drop. And that is what you see here. So because of, remember what I was telling you, there's two things. Because of the forced liquidations by firms that were over leveraged, they're not selling because they turned sour on Bitcoin. They are being compelled to sell. This compelled selling has accelerated Bitcoin down unnaturally more than some of the other parts of the industry. And so therefore, that's one reason why Bitcoin's dominance is falling. It's cascading for sales is causing it to drop more on average than the rest of the industry. All right, because everyone monetizes with Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So Bitcoin is used for almost everything. All right. All right, that's one reason. The other reason is because there has been a flock to stable coins. So you have to understand that stable coins really should not be factored in to this indicator, although it is, if you want a truer view of Bitcoin versus all the other shit coins or altcoins out there, right? So, but we, but it doesn't separate stable coins out. So because let's call these other alternative cryptocurrencies, I call them shit coins. All right. All right. Let's like, so, and let's call these stable coins like US. DT, US, DC. Now I know they're, they've been bleeding too, all right? But uh, at any rate, there has been an outflow out of these coins into stable coins as a resting 
period. So the the rise in assets on stable coins is all because stable coins don't go up or down if they're good ones, right? They don't go up or down much. If Bitcoin drops a little bit because the stable coin doesn't drop and more money is going into something that does not drop, this indicator is going to collapse. So even if Bitcoin goes down 1%, you're going to see a big drop in Bitcoin's dominance because the thing that it's being measured against is designed not to move. In order to have a truer dominance indicator, stable coins should be taken out. So now you get everything is moving. Now you get a clearer picture of how is Bitcoins move in relationship to everything else? And you take the stable part out of the equation, which gives the, the dominant, which basically takes a big part of the efficacy away from the dominance indicator in this case. In addition to that, much of the valuation of a lot of this, these coins here is false valuation. So let me explain to you how a coin can create false, false valuation. So let's say, for instance, um, my name is OV. This is me. I decide that I'm going to create a coin, which I never will do. All right? There's no need to do anything outside and beyond Bitcoin. So boom, I'm never do this. But we're using an example. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to do that. Take my name off of this. Sorry. We're going to use idiot boy here. So idiot boy here, right? He decides he's going to create a coin, right? And he and his buddies are going to create a supply of 1 billion coins out of thin air, right? Not very hard to do. All he's got to do is take the open source Bitcoin code, change a few lines and say, I've got a new coin and it's very different and it's better than Bitcoin, right? All right. He sets the supply at 1 billion coins. Now, he, right, takes... All right. 95% of the coin supply. All right. For himself and his family and his friends. Right. He is only going to make. Let me just do this again, make that clear. So this is 95% of the floating supply. 95% of the floating supply. He's going to take 5% right here and make that available to the public to buy. Now, what he's going to do is have someone buy the first coin from that 5% at $1. One of his friends, one of his family members, one of the backers of the coin will make the first transaction at $1. Now, because the overall supply created is 1 billion, this instantly, this one transaction, instantly gives this brand new idiot coin, right? A 1 billion dollar valuation. This 1 billion dollar valuation will cause Bitcoin's dominance to drop because the value of this coin just went up $1 billion. But it's fake valuation. It's not that that ecosystem, this brand new idiot coin, is actually worth $1 billion. It's based on the last transaction and the amount of supply that was created by the idiot, right? Right? It's not, it's not like all wow that's weird my pen is acting really weird here it's not like if this guy wanted to he could take his 95 percent and dump it on the market there was only one purchase for a dollar so what does this guy have to do he has to pay for articles to be written he pay, sends money here sends money there sends money there sends money there to have articles that are written about this new idiot coin all right and the marketing 
starts to happen to bring more people into this buying at a dollar, hoping to get, but they're only using 5% of the float to do this with. So they're hoping that at a certain point they can get so many people to believe in it that they can start selling their 95% to the people here. These are the people that come in and start believing all the BS, right? These are all the people. So now maybe we can take 5% and sell it there. Boom. They just created their own fortune with a marketing machine, right? And then let's say, all right, we sell another 5%. Now we've got 85% where they're dumping on the public coming in from their marketing. And this is what's called a pre-mined coin. They pre-mine, they create out of thin air a big part for themselves. A little part is to establish the growing price to make the chart look like it's rising all right, you buy at $1, you buy at $1.25, you buy at $1.30, you buy. And so it looks like the price is rising. Look at this price. It's outperforming Bitcoin. Da, 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 da. It's all freaking manufactured. Do you understand? Listen, guys, I've been in this industry a long time. All right. And while I was never involved with these cheap penny stock manipulation pump and dump schemes, never in my life. I, in the industry, I know how they've worked. I know how they've worked. I've been around this industry for a long time. This is nothing more than the age-old penny stock pump and dump um, mechanism that's going on. 19, almost 20,000 pump and dumps. That's all they are. All right, I'm sorry. All right, you can call me a Bitcoin maxi, but that's all, all of them are. All of them were pre-mined. All of them operated under the same system. Every single one except Bitcoin. So I don't want to hear about anything else. All right. I don't want to hear about another coin. I don't want to hear about another project. I want to hear about another anything else. Do you understand? It's Bitcoin and that's it.